I've built my life around being close to the ocean. I can see the effects that we are having on it. I'm Greg Long, professional big wave surfer, environmental activist, and ocean enthusiast. As a surfer, somebody who's in the water on a daily basis or weekly basis, the effects of climate change and the impacts they're having on our coastal playgrounds are very apparent and very real. So I actually grew up down here, this beach called the Trails or the Bluffs at San Onofre, and was pushed into my very first wave here when I was about six years old. In that time, you know, all the beaches in San Clemente have changed significantly. A tremendous amount of coastal erosion. Uh, a lot of these bluffs, as you've seen here, actually have been sliding and kind of disappearing you know, back into the water. The fact is, a lot of these surf breaks will be affected. There's research that's been done recently showing that about 40% of the breaks, you know, best conditions, meaning the optimum tides, uh, by 2100 will be uh, impacted by sea level rise. And the impacts of this are so widespread. In the same time that our surf breaks are going to be affected, there's going to be island atolls like the Maldives or the Kiribati Islands in the South Pacific that will essentially be underwater, displacing millions of people. So it's an incredibly vast problem. I am Stephanie Seekich Quinn. I am the Coastal Preservation Manager for the headquarters of Surfrider. Unfortunately, surfers can see the impacts of climate change through increased sewage overflows, which come from increased heavy rains. We can see them when we're out swimming, surfing, playing in the ocean. This happens because we have more rain that is cascading water into our sewage treatment facilities and essentially causing an overflow problem. Of course, we also have the rain that's cascading down from our urban areas and putting pollution into the ocean. All but two of the lower 48 states have experienced an increase in rain since the 1950s. In fact, just with Hurricane Harvey, 32 million gallons of sewage spread throughout southeast Texas during the extent of the Harvey damage. So climate change is this vast, overwhelming topic. But when you do look within your own kind of personal respective lives, there are very simple tasks that you can implement. Riding a bike to the beach instead of driving, if you have the ability or taking public transport, carpooling, you know, your groceries, every single item that you buy on the shelf also has a carbon footprint. So looking at items that are uh, locally grown. Setting your air conditioning and your heating at a certain temperature so you're not using too much energy. Slowing down when you're driving, believe it or not, when you speed, it increases 30% of your consumption of fuel. Recycling, all of our plastic products are made from petroleum, which is the vicious cycle of creating greenhouse gases. All these small changes that you make at home build up and help these larger efforts that we're doing on policy and legislation and sea level rise planning. And between doing these private individual things and these larger policy goals, there will be room for major impacts in the future. And we're on the precipice right now of seeing great change happen with how we're responding to climate change. And so it starts you know, here on the beach you know, and within your local communities and then obviously extends you know, outward, you know, that it's uh, the most precious resource that we have. You know, without a healthy uh, ocean, you know, we wouldn't be able to exist and thrive as a human family.